and we are live. Good evening, everyone. Um, please make sure to introduce yourself in the comments. Uh, welcome to tonight's live Viviana live stream. And tonight's topic is how to build IT career after moving to Australia. So thank you so much for finding some time this evening to join our discussion. So how are you going with the lockdown number five if you're in Melbourne? <laughs> so please let me know. Um, I'm extremely lucky to spend this week in actually Queensland. So um, apology if I have any technical problems today as I didn't take my laptop with me. So originally I came to Queensland just for three days holidays. So I've been here 10 days. So, you know, things happen. And uh, so, um, Make sure let me know how you're going with the lockdown in Melbourne. Introduce yourself in the comments. Let us know what you do and where you're watching us from. And also join our conversation with your comments and questions. So tonight we're going to talk about how to build IT career after moving to Australia. And Gabor is going to share his valuable insights and real life experience when it comes to starting your career in Australia and challenges you might face along the way. So I'm sure there are a few of you who's experienced the frustration after moving to another country, trying to start your career almost from the beginning sometimes. So it's an incredibly relevant topic. Please tag and share with your friends who need to hear this. So before I'll pass it on to the Gabor to introduce himself, I just want to quickly remind you that we're going live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. So to watch the replays, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or check out the website yanamarsins.com. So I'm going live every second Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Melbourne time with various experts from my network and we're talking about all the things, personal branding, LinkedIn, career change, and job search. So we're going to answer all your questions from all the platforms. Please stay on the topic and please make sure you ask as many questions as you want and the most active participants might get some surprise at the end of the stream as well. So that's enough of me. I'm passing on to um, Gabor to introduce himself. Hi, Yana. Uh, it's, it's great to be here finally at, at Live with Yana. I mean, two, uh, three weeks ago now it was uh, Michael, so I, I really enjoyed that uh, talk. And today it's me, so I'm very lucky and, and introduction. My name is Gabor. Actually, it's Gabor, like a pro pronunciation, but I'm used to, like, if, if you're an immigrant, probably are used to um, people butchering your name completely. So I, you know, I'm, I'm usually Gabor. I don't listen to anything that is similar to that. So, uh, yeah, and, and why am I the expert in how to build your IT career after moving to Australia? I'm, I'm not an expert in it, but I've done it myself. Um, originally, I'm from Hungary. Um, I was born a long time ago. You probably see the gray hair. And uh, I came here when I was 31 years old. And, and that was uh, 15 years ago. So you can count uh, my age. <laughs> and, uh, but, and, and in Hungary, I, I'm from Hungary originally, uh, from a small town called Jör. And uh, obviously when I came here, no one, no one knew about, you know, like Hungary. Like, are you hungry? very funny. Uh, obviously, I had an accent immediately. And uh, even though I, I was experienced, I, I was I worked as a consultant, a management consultant in Hungary, no one would know it here. And uh, in the past 15 years, obviously, I rebuilt my career and, um, and rebranded myself. And uh, maybe I can briefly talk about my experience today. So it's not really... Uh, you know, not an expert, but an expert because I have 15 years experience of uh, being an immigrant in, in, in Australia. So uh, I guess we're going to start a little bit about, uh, you know, your actual story, what you experience. And uh, you already mentioned that you actually um, moved here from Hungary. And um, so in 2006, and I guess my first questions would be, Look, a lot of us, uh, you know, moving to another country and we might have some sort of expectations. Yep. So what what uh, job we want to get or what we're going to do. So I guess my first question would be, what's what surprised you? You know, you moved here and you thought that you're going to do this. And in reality, it didn't turn out like you think at all. So what was, I guess, the biggest surprise that you moved here? 
obviously, while, while I lived a little bit abroad, so I wasn't afraid the culture shock, I still had a bit of a culture shock. Uh, small things, not not big things. When I went, to, when I finally got my first job, and I will talk about that briefly. Small things like people having a sandwich for lunch, and I was almost like upset. Like, how can you have lunch a sandwich for lunch? Like, uh, you know, in Hungary, I used to have a soup, a seconds, and dessert. It was like the a huge lunch, and people just had like a ham and cheese sandwich. And like, let's go out for lunch. Like, uh, small things. Let's like, eat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's see it. Let's see it. Yeah. And, and that was like a complete shock to me. And first, uh, and, and of course, not understanding, like I, I spoke English, but I didn't understand the Australian Ochre accent. You know, get a mate. And I'm like, what are you talking about? How are you going, mate? And I was like, just, just thrown up. I've heard, you know, American English. Um, in Europe, we studied like focus was more, more on British English, but the accent was like, yeah, it was very difficult for me for the first one or two months. Yep, uh, and then and then it's kind of good. so. So, what about the actual, um, you know, the um, on the career side? What sort of, I guess, disadvantages and advantages you've noticed when you moved here? So, so I think when you're coming to a new country, the first thing is you think it's a disadvantage, and 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 in in some ways it is, right? You doesn't matter who you were. Like if if I would have been a CIO, I, I wasn't, but. I could have said that, hey, I was a CIO in, and I have the best uh, university from Hungary, but, uh, but no one is rolling out the red carpet for you. So if, if you are coming to a new country, people will not understand whether you went to a good university or whether you went to a bad university. Or if, it's, if people do a reference check on you, no one knows if it's your friend who would just say that, yeah, yeah, Gabor was a CIO, of course, at the biggest company. Like, uh, they, they will not know if it's true or not. Even if it's true, it's, it's hard to assess. So I think one of the biggest disadvantages, no, no one knows you. No one knows that whether your qualification and your work experience is, is good or not. Even if you work like, let's say, if you worked for a big company overseas, let's say you're, you're from Chengdu and you worked at ANZ, that's probably good, like no, having an Australian name there. But uh, if you worked for a non-Australian company and uh, the university where you study that, no one knows it, like it's not Harvard and Yale, that's an automatic disadvantage. Uh, there is an advantage though, and, and I think it's it's very important, especially in today's market where diversity and inclusion becomes more and more um, in, the, in the front, fr forefront. Um, when you bring in, a di like have, coming from a different country, is uh, you bring in a different culture as well. And you also bring a different point of view, what is, um, what is would be the typical Australian point of view. So I think uh, you actually have an advantage as well because you bring in something that uh, we, we don't have like i i'm an old immigrant now i'm i'm australian i'm, I'm an australian right now like uh, i'm not a hungarian anymore i mean i i am but i don't have the same mindset and i cannot bring the same culture so if let's say someone comes from hungary even though we would speak the same language we come from two different era and and that can be an advantage yeah and also also the I experienced the same, like if people ask me what's going on in Russia now, I have no idea, like I, I can't comment, I don't know what sort of music in Russia right now, I don't know what's, I don't know uh, who's popular now, I, I would have no idea. So, but I guess my, my other question would be, um, you mentioned like disadvantages and advantages, but uh, what about um, particularly career in IT, because obviously there is, uh, you know, people moving and working in the different industries. Uh, would you say that uh, people who have IT experience have a bit of an advantage here because IT in demand at the moment or not necessary? I, I think so. I think so. There is definitely an advantage over like if you're a, a legal representative or even in like people and culture, it would be a lot more difficult in my view. But I, I work in IT. So uh, definitely if you're a developer, I mean, you know, whether you're if you're, you know, a Node.js developer, um, and uh, probably doesn't matter if your English is like not native English, definitely not a problem. And um, yeah, I think it's probably easier right now. And there is a huge demand uh, from what I can see in the IT industry. Um, if you are, let's say, in a more softer part, like if you're a business analyst, probably a bit more difficult. But if you have like 
like a very tech focused uh, background i think it's it's not i wouldn't say easy never easy but easier than than most in the other most of the other jobs um your friend is kind of saying hi to us <laughs> i was hey, here Abby. that's great <laughs> Let me see, I really just had a coffee not long ago. Yeah, the times that we could have coffees, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, obviously, um, so you mentioned there are some advantages and disadvantages. Um, so, but where would you start? You know, like you, you come into Australia, you maybe have some sort of jobs in mind. So, would you say you need to have a really set goals like where you want to be what sort of career path to take or you feel like you have to play by ear and go with the flow sometimes i i think it's a bit of a mix if you don't have any goal like if you just go with the flow then 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 you know you will you will get where the river takes you and uh, uh but so I, I think it's important to set goals uh at the same time, to manage, you, you got to manage the expectations. So if you are coming here and you were a, a CIO or a you know IT manager, and and that's your expectation that oh I just come in, apply for a few IT manager jobs, you you might get some disappointment. So um, I, I think to have a goal is important and kind of understand like what your specialty is. Um, for me, coming from Hungary, I was a consultant. So uh, as a management consultant, I was doing testing jobs. I was doing, you know, a rec some requirements analysis. Sometimes it was more like project management. Uh, uh, you know, whatever the whatever the client was, I, I did the job that they required. But when I came here and if I say that, oh, I can do anything, it will sound very dodgy. Like it will be, hey, Gabor, what is your specialty? Oh, I can do anything. Just tell me and I just pay. And uh, people will like, yeah, not trust me. So I, I had, back then, I put myself, I had a lot of my experience in testing. So my, my first job was a quality assurance specialist. It was really a testing job, um, which I only did for six months because as it turned out that Hungarian salary expectations and Australian salary expectations are not really, <laughs> not really in par. Uh, and I just started like, uh, I, I, I was very happy to get my first job. And that's one of the things, managing the expectations. Uh, you might not get the top salary that you want. You might take something that is uh, is less what you want, but it gets you that that crucial experience, not just for your resume, but also for yourself to understand how does an Australian workplace work, how what is the culture like, and and to me that was more important. But after six months, I realized that I will run out of money, so I, I had to change, unfortunately, quite early. And I guess it's quite common that sometimes we have to take a step back um, when when we are moving to another country. Uh, so did so you obviously had to take the step back. So do you think that's often the case that people experience? I think so. I think so. I, I even see people are who are not in IT that uh, that they do odd jobs and they are like dumbing down their resumes because they are they are overqualified for the jobs that they apply apply for. And uh, it can be really frustrating that you have, you know, good education, uh, you have work experience, and, and then you have to step back. But sometimes, sometimes to step ahead, you, you may need to step back. And, you know, there are people who are relatively lucky and, um, and manage, to, uh, manage to get kind of the same position. But sometimes it's uh, like for me, I, I started as a tester. I enjoyed it. It was a good workplace. Um, but yeah, so to me, sometimes you've got to step back to, to make the step ahead. And uh, you also mentioned to me before that you've been running a IT meetup group. Oh, very, very good. Yeah. I've been, I've been like, uh, I'm a bit of a social butterfly. So I, I go to lots of meetup groups. I, I, I ran before a Japanese meetup group and, and, uh, one of the, uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in meetup groups. And uh, in the past three years, I've been running a meetup group called Agile Business Analysts and Product Owners. And I meet a lot of the people who are coming from overseas and, and they have questions, they don't have a job. And, and the most frequently asked questions there is like, how do I get a job? Like I, I've been applying for role after role after role and I don't even get callbacks if I'm getting a call. Uh, you know, maybe I'm getting called in an interview and I never hear again from from the recruiter 
and and it's a very common challenge. I know people like one of my friends here applied for over 700 jobs till he got his first uh, first role. Uh, he's yeah, he's from Iran. I think 768. I will not mention his name because I didn't ask for his permission. But he's in IT, he, and he he knows you know like he's in my area like uh, agility, and and his first job I think took him 768 applications, and at the end he got the job because um, because uh, because I I sorry I don't want to beat my own drum, but um, <laughs> I I managed to talk to the recruiter at the company where I worked at that time. And she said that, oh yeah, of course, I would like to listen to him. And then, then that's how she got his first job. She were like a personal um, recommendation to get in for an interview. Uh, so yes, then... and I think, and I think we see it so common. And um, then you get a referral or someone introduced you to someone. It just makes the introduction so much warmer. Like even then we connecting through LinkedIn and if you're sending message to someone saying, oh, like such and such recommend me to connect with you, it's already feels like, you know, just, you know, cold calling. But if the person is doing, I don't know, the chat on LinkedIn and putting you both there, it feels even like even more warm introduction and you feel like you could you probably need to reply to this message. So uh, it's so much power in these referrals. And sometimes it only takes this like one referral to to get the job after 700 applications. Yeah, so if, if you are out there, and uh, actually, is it, is it okay to ask the audience where are they from or? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so who's ever in the line? Um, guys, if you can share with us, um, which country you were born in? Yes, so uh, you know, um, I was born in Russia, as as you know, uh, from um, Hungary, and um, you know, I was rushing, Gabor is hungry, <laughs> as we do. <laughs> so please, if you're still on the line, let us know where, uh, which country you were born in, and uh, obviously, if you also needed to relocate at some point. Um, yeah. No, Here we go. The, we have um, John here saying Sri Lanka. It's Johan. Hey, Johan. Uh, Johan. <laughs> I can't pronounce the names, am I? I'm hopeless. Um, it's, I blame my accent, you know. <laughs> That's a good thing. We can get away with anything. I, I can. I can. I can. I, I said sometimes so inappropriate things. I won't won't recommend it to anyone, but I could get away with it. Uh, not not on purpose. I must say, not on purpose, but. Um, yeah, I, I think um, I think one of my performance reviews, I uh, my manager asked me like, what you know, tell me examples of your proactivity, and I said I, I wanted to say that I kept bugging someone, and I said I, I kept buggering someone, and he told me that that's not the right way to say it uh, because it means something completely different. Um, uh, small things, small things, and but you know I could get away with it. It's a good story now. Uh, yeah, and Avi, uh, born in India. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Avi is uh, from Himachal. Uh, I actually know that. So, um, but yeah, so coming coming from a uh, from a different country has its has its advantages. And what I uh, when I met people, um, especially from India, when when they told me that if you are in India, like it matters a lot, like you know your education, the, the work experience, your resume. And what I found in Australia, and that's my personal experience, and you don't have to agree with me, but I think in, in Australia, like who you know, and more importantly, who knows you, is actually possibly more important than what you know when, when, it's, uh, when it's about getting the job. So uh, personal references or someone recommending you, someone knowing you is, uh, I think is absolutely crucial. Maybe not in this, like not in the, even even in the, I think even in the junior more, like if you start your career, career, like if you apply for a junior developer role and there are, you know, hundreds of people apply. If, if you have a recommendation, someone says that, oh, I know this person and uh, she or he is really nice and you, you should listen to her or him, um, that, that can be an advantage. If you are applying off the street, like, you know, usually recruiters or even even if they want to look at all the resumes, they, they will make shortlists. It will be very hard to know who are the really good people. And 
And what I found as well, that networking, like going to meetups and making sure that people like you, um, not, sorry, you still got to be, be yourself, not like, hey, I'm such a good person, please refer me, will not work. But, uh, but if you go to the same meetup community, you ask questions that are, um, you know, we, relevant, relevant, yeah. relevant, yeah, absolutely. And people like you and they said, okay, this guy or girl, uh, um, you know, asking interesting questions, participating. And, um, you know, when it comes to business analysts, I can, I can name a few business analysts who come to my mind. Um, if people would ask me for recommendation, hey, Gabor, we are looking for business analysts. Who would you recommend? Uh, I'm not a business analyst, but I could recommend a few people who are, who, who I know that they are interested in the topics. They go to the community meetups and they are asking good questions and they are just generally nice human beings. It doesn't mean oh. that they are an expert, but yeah. So. Definitely. And it just, uh, um, it sounds like a, you know, simple, um, simple concept, concept, but so many people disregard the power of networking. We just have a few more people replying. Anastasia here, she's from Russia as well. And um, Naveen's here from Melbourne. So he didn't need to relocate this time. <laughs> so, um, but I guess uh, that's one of the mistakes maybe that some people make Then they come to the country and they start thinking, oh my God, what I need to study or what course I need to take, or what qualification I need to get. So sometimes actually going to, as you mentioned, meetup groups and being part of the professional association and so on can be way more powerful than getting more qualification, especially, I think, especially in the beginning. And we need to remember also, I think that trust builds over time. You can't expect just to rock up to one meetup, just, you know, shake everyone's hand and say like, oh, look, I'm looking for a job. Do you know anyone? So it doesn't work like this. So you actually need to come a few times talk to people, get to know them, that people get to know you. And it's, it, yeah, it's not just like popping up once and saying, hi, I'm Jana, find me a job. Yeah, oh, I, I get that as well, by the way. Uh, like when someone is new, like, you know, hey, sir, uh, can I volunteer? I, I'm happy to work for you. And I never hear from them again. So I usually know if someone contacted me like three times, I know they are serious. Um, but, uh, but yeah, for, for example, for me, when I, um, the last time I applied for a role and got the role, like, uh, was like in 2007, because from in the last six, seven years, my, uh, my roles are coming through personal recommendations. People know me from the community. So, uh, yep. I've just, I've just got a new job, by the way. I haven't told everyone what this job is, is yet, but I got a new job. Uh, I'm starting next Monday and I didn't even send my resume once. I haven't used my resume. I went to a few interviews. I talked with quite a few people. I didn't need to send my resume. It all went through networking and talking with people and through introduction from the people. Um, obviously, um, I have a bit of a presence on LinkedIn and it helped me a lot. Um, then I already know quite a few people, but it's also over time because people know me for years now as well, years and years. So I've been here so you've been here 15 years i've been 11 years here so you you obviously build a trust trust over time paul is actually asking uh so it's who you know not what you know so okay what do you think so where is this balance like okay so <laughs> obviously obviously you need to you need to like you need to have the what you know as well like you cannot just be a, like i'm a very nice guy but you don't want to me be your heart surgeon because that that will not end well and um i think it's important the who you know or who knows you to to kind of get in get in like the door sort of get in your you know, I cannot say it even properly in English, but get your foot in, in, in the door. In the door, yeah. Uh, but obviously when you are have, running an interview and um, and when you are at work, the, just being nice, it will not cut it. You still need to, you still need to have the what you know, you still need to uh, kind of nail it in an interview. So if they ask you, like in my profession, if they ask you, you know, what is user story mapping or, or what do you think about the different agile frameworks, you gotta know it. Like there is like, you cannot just, hey, I'm nice. Uh, I don't know, but I'm happy to learn. Like that will not cut it. You still need to have that. But when you apply to jobs or don't just rely on your resume, just, just make sure uh, 
like what I had on the slide before, if, if you can bring it up for a moment, is, is people are actually willing to help. So it, networking is not just about, it's not about you. It's more about how you can help others, but others will help you as well. And, um, and if you take out people for coffee, and I, I don't, like, if you just ask a recruiter, like, can I take you out for a coffee? Maybe so they say no. But if you know people from meetups, you met them a few times, uh, it's, it's okay to ask them, hey, would you have some time for me? Like 30 minutes, 60 minutes. They might not be able to help you to get a job, but they might refer you to someone else. And, and if you, you know, if, if you ask me for a coffee, let's say, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to pay for my own coffees, just to, I'm not trying to get free coffees. Uh, but, but if you go out for a coffee and I, I cannot help you, I, I will look for someone else who might help. And if people get to know you and they get to know who you are, it's probably easier to get that, that door um, on the front door. But it's still important to know. Like, I will, yeah, I will not apply for a heart surgeon, even if I'm going to heart surgeon meetups. I'm not. Because you still, you still got to know your stuff. But getting another three certification and just keep applying, probably I would say less chance of a success in my experience. Oh, definitely. And I like that on this um, slide, you have asked for more contacts because um, to be honest, it's, it's a really simple strategy. But every time you have a chat with someone and everyone can use it, you know, you you new to the, you know, you new to a country or you whatever new to the industry. You come to the meetup, you speak with, you know, a certain amount of people. You went with like, say, three people for coffee. So those people, as you said, might not be able to help you. But no one stopped uh, stopping you by asking each of this person if they can introduce you to two more people. Don't need to ask them, you know, ask them to introduce you to millions of people. That's too hard. Just ask them, do you know two more people in the industry, you know, or two more people, you know, that may be looking for the similar project or whatever. And also, like, from three people, you already know six people. <laughs> And from these six people, it's a really simple strategy. Do you know two more people? Yeah. And you will be and you will be surprised uh, how, how quickly you can actually grow your network, especially if you uh, have a bit of a clear goal who you want to connect with. Absolutely. Like if you would ask me right now, who, who should I, uh, you know, if, if, if you would ask me, like, can you can you tell me two more people who could come to, you know, Live Udiana? And I'm like, of course, there is Johan in the chat. I'm not sure if he's still watching, but but Johan, uh, Johan and I worked together recently, and he's one of the uh, best coach uh, who I know. And and Avi, who was there before, he is one of the best project manager, program manager who I ever worked with. So I would immediately because because I know of them because they were there right now. Immediately, their name is popping up. If you ask me, like, oh, can you tell me a good program manager? I would be like, oh, wait a moment, Avi. And I, I know Avi. I worked with Avi back in. 2011, so 10 years ago, but uh, because because he's uh, like we still meet and we still have that connection, ov obviously he comes to my mind. Like most of the others, even if they were good, if if they if people don't you know uh, associate your name with with a certain role, they will they will not uh, give you the name. If someone asked me for video coaching, I mean, you know, it's obvious. I would say, <laughs> oh, you want to, really? I know someone good. Here you go. Tatiana. So Johan and Avi, you up, you up for the, <laughs> you up for the chat now. Then Gabor uh, recommended you, so you, you know, you have to, you have to go to a live stream as well. Um, Avi is saying, Ayana, congratulations on your new job. Here we go. Yeah, actually, guys, I didn't tell you, my new job is actually IT recruitment. Here we go. So I want to talk with all of you. <laughs> so now, now it's your chance to take me out for a coffee. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Just behave, behave nicely, okay? <laughs> so, okay, back, back, back to. Um, so we already talk about a few things here. Yeah. So actually, yeah, talking about uh, talking with recruiters as well, uh, as you mentioned on your slides, could be could be good strategy as well. Could could be you know, hidden miss, but you can always you know, ask recruiters to introduce you to you know some network as well and. Uh, get to know more people too yeah and and recruiters what i found and uh, i don't want to judge recruiters but i found small recruitment agencies work better uh, like the large ones again quite often very sales focused they got to get the numbers um with the, with the smaller one who are specializing more um 
I, I, I don't know. What is the name of your recruitment, uh, the organization that you're joining? Old Squares. Old, old squares. Old squares. Yeah, Great. it's a small one. Yeah. Can, can I recommend another one for IT people? Of course, of course. Okay. <laughs> again, I haven't personal. started the job till Monday, so you can still do it. <laughs> like for example, I know uh, a recruitment company, Momentum, Momentum, who is Alan, yep. Alan Herity. And for example, Alan comes to quite often. He came to the meetups, and he truly cares about the people that. Uh, I think Johan might be working right now with Alan, uh, so uh, that's that's interesting. I, I didn't plan it this way, but <laughs> Alan is some, someone I would recommend as a recruiter. Uh, sorry, Alan, if I just sent a hundred percent to your way, but uh... <laughs> after they all have to coffee with me, they can go to Alan. Yeah, yeah first, first Jana, <laughs> then Alan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so okay, back 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 to your recommendation, Gabor. So, um. What about qualification? Would you recommend to um, the new starting IT career in Australia do some qualifications here or nothing particularly comes in mind? I, I think if you, like, I, I know my industry, I think qualifications, you know, like they, what, what do they prove? If they are a good qualification, yes, probably yes. But most of the, most of the basic qualifications that most people have and they look for, they're like two-day courses. And if you want, you're interested, Definitely. I, you know, in my industry, like being a certified Scrum Master, like, you know, you would go there, you would do the course in two days, you would be a certified Scrum Master in two days. Uh, if you are a certified coach and it has different levels, obviously, um, yeah, that like if you are having this high level qualification, that would probably mean something for the experts. But I think at the recruitment stage, probably, I don't know, they, they might check it. Oh, certified Scrum Master, great tick but it's a two-day course so yeah i'm i'm you know too up to, yep. i'm not quite sure i don't have a lot of certifications yep so I'm, not con not convinced that they make a big difference personally not that convinced but it doesn't mean that all qualifications are bad um so Johan is uh, sending live hearts to alan oh here we go it's you know <laughs> <laughs> everyone knows everyone here. Uh, actually, um, while we have you in the line, uh, Avi and Johan, and I think Ravi is here as well, Naveen, so Anastasia, whoever is still in the line, um, please let us know also um, what was your strategy that you were like uh, getting a job, maybe not a new country, but you know, trying to get your entry level job. Did you? Did you use any particular strategy? Was it through networking and referrals or, you know, maybe through other, you know, resources? So please, if you have any uh, tips to share, please put it in the comments. We would love to see your input as well. And um, back to back to the Gabor. So, um, so what's your thoughts about how actually, you know, you, you mentioned here that we need to try to get referrals. What would be your suggestions to try to get these referrals a part of like, I don't know, going to meetups? How else would you connect with people? So I think your connections matter a lot. Let's say, um, for example, I, I think, for example, I want to get a job at AIA, which right now I don't, but uh, I know one of my connections uh, named Johan works there. <laughs> So I would probably reach out to Johan that can he recommend to contact me anyone from that company who would either look for the position or just can um, I can learn more about either the role or the company. Um, and, and, and probably I would reach out to my connections to introduce me to other connections. And if they, uh, like, I wouldn't con connect people who I never, never talked to. So obviously I would try to get a live connection. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I wouldn't just reach out to someone I haven't seen for 10 years and, hey, I'm here. Help me to find it. Help me finding a job. I would probably try to look for who can introduce me, uh, who is like a, a real advocate of mine, not just because we worked together 10 years ago. Um, so yeah. did you did you feel like I don't know how to put this question nicely? What do you think was your biggest like failure than you started looking for a job in Australia? Uh, biggest failure when I started looking, I, I, I was very lucky because I, I, I got 
a job very quickly, very quickly, like within a month I found a job. Um, so the failures when I looked for a job, it's uh, applying for the wrong job, like applying for everything that uh, that's more later, like the next one when I when I wanted to find a job and I just, okay, I could do this job, I apply. I could do that job, I apply. Uh, I, I think there is some there is some research on how um, women and men look for a job and then women look for that. Okay, I'm just taking nine out of the ten. You know, like I'm not applying because I don't have a chance. And guys are like, oh, I'm, I'm applying for everything. So uh, yeah, I applied for roles that I'm <laughs> I'm not passionate about. I'm not qualified for. I'm not, I don't have the experience, but I still applied. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to narrow it to too much down like if you tick every single box then you probably don't grow in that role so i think i think to find that balance like what are the roles that you actually care and want to work in i think that matters yeah setting say, setting the actually goals and understanding what's important for you not just uh where you can make money or if money important for you maybe that's the case <laughs> Uh, look, short short term is okay. Like, uh, for example, right right now, if I like, I'm contracting at the moment, and and my contract is, you know, like still another three months ago. But what 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 after that? How do I position myself? Do I want to do the same role to to a similar company because they will say that, oh, oh, look at this, work for this company and have this experience? I would have probably good chance, but I might be completely bored. Or if I want to do something else that I'm uh, I'm relatively beginner with, how do I how do I position myself? How do I brand myself? And I think personal branding and uh, you know people know you for something is important. Uh, like if if you look at my LinkedIn profile, I on purpose I put on blockchain now. Am I an expert in blockchain? Well, you know, not a lot of expert in blockchains. I have like uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> I lost some money on Bitcoin. I mean, I have a bit more, but <laughs> but, but pretty much my experience in, is is like one year. Uh, how do I position myself with one year experience when I have something else with seven years of experience? And and to know that how do you like how do you brand yourself? How do you make those connections? Um, even if you're not a new immigrant, but you are kind of reinventing yourself. I, th I think it's important. Definitely, Navir is saying. Try to understand what you really want in your role. And yeah. um, I guess we were talking with Michael two, um, two weeks ago a lot about the actually understanding um, how you want to plan your career. And um, I don't know if someone was watching our live stream, but Michael um, suggests asking yourself a question, what um, position do you want to retire from? <laughs> I, lo I love that question. It's, it's a good question. I mean, you know, you never know. I mean, for me, it's still another, even though I'm older, it's still another 20, 25 years, depending on what is the retirement age by then. Um, but but yeah, it's um, it might change and the jobs that we have today might not exist in, in 20 years. I mean, 20 years ago, was there a Scrum Master? Scrum was there, you know, mid 90s, but no one was a Scrum Master really. Now there are tons of Scrum Master positions. And uh, yeah, I, I think, planning it and what what you want to retire from by the way i know michael from the meetup groups so i met michael in meetups and and i didn't know that he will speak at your event and when i saw him, i'm like oh i know michael and i don't know who do you, is it a secret who do you have in two weeks or or you don't know yet i don't know yet actually <laughs> probably Jochen and avi <laughs> yeah probably and, and i would say hey i know them <laughs> No, I, I actually um, haven't scheduled the topic for next two weeks, so that's, you know, the application's open. <laughs> so, um, and I've been saying, give your all effort for every interview, but also understand when you're wasting time. Actually, Gabor, did you ever have um, this experience and you came to the job, you already in the interview, and you know you don't really want this job, but you still need to go to the interview? I, I, I had that once but i found it out at the interview uh, it's more just like um and and apologies but there is one company i would never work for it's accenture and i think johan worked there in the past but accenture i, I just decided never work for and i had an interview with a recruitment agent and the first sentence well well this position is with accenture and i said well i am sorry to interrupt you it means re I'm, I'm really rude and and it i look really stupid now but i'm not interested in working for accenture 
and and she was very surprised because Accenture has a good brand, a good reputation. Like, why would you not work for Accenture? And I just had, you know, bad experience in the past, and you know, it's maybe bad by me to judge, but I just decided, uh, stupid commitment. I just said, no, I will never work for Accenture. So I didn't waste time, but I look stupid. So you, but you didn't ask about, um, so you know that you're going to be through the position, but you haven't asked which company it's for. Yeah, I did. I did. Straight, straight I away. To, I'm like, I was looking for a job, any job. Yeah. Sure. No, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes even just like, yeah, good, good, good actually example, asking more questions when you speak, talking with the recruiters or looking at the, uh, it's it's hard sometimes to uh, understand the job description from the ad. It could be quite you know quite general in the ad, but uh, trying trying to yeah trying to ask as many questions when um, uh, before actually going to going to actual interview. Uh, Abby saying excellent session. Gabor has covered most of the do it don'ts very well. If I can add to it, have a clear outline plan with the end goal in mind and take one step at a time. Uh, one step at a time been my <laughs> go-to from the beginning of this year, that's for sure. Uh, setting, setting the achievable goals. Um, uh, I guess, again, like I'm uh, repeating myself, then the Michael said, what sort of job you want to retire from? Uh, you have your end goal about what, what position you want to retire from, and then you just kind of uh, set the blocks or like where I need to be in the 10 years time in this case, or where I need to be in the 15 years time in this case, and uh, and trying to set these achievable goals while, you, while you're getting to the um, your dream position. Yeah, and, and make sure the plan is like, planning is more important than the plan. So planning always, like I always replan, 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 because things change. Uh, what you thought that you want to do, you might not want to do. like. 30 years ago, 30, and I'm not that long, 20 years ago, I thought, okay, I want to be a CTO at Vodafone. I don't want to do a CTO position at Vodafone. Definitely not. I, I don't want to work for a big corporate in a C-level position. Definitely not for me. Money is good, but I wouldn't enjoy it. Yeah, and I am totally agree, Gabor, about uh, resetting your goals and that plan is more important. Uh, planning is more important than the plan. Because I guess when we have a plan in time, we waste less energy of, you know, as Navir mentioned before, going to interviews we don't need to go to. Um, so we, we do need to have this, you know, plan plan um, in our heads and we can always adjust it as we go. But uh, when we set, when we have a set goal, we pretty much just waste less energy and make uh, make a decision quicker because we have a plan in time. And in the in the year, the things change. No one stops us to review our plan and make some adjustments. Cannot agree with you more. Yep, <laughs> adjustment. Um, Steve is saying, great advice, guys. Going through a big period of um, transition myself right now and have just taken up a new job and started a four-year study plan. Here you go. Hats off to you, Steve, and congratulations as well. Four-year uh, study plan. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's good. I, th I think you need to re re reinvent yourself anyway. Whether really, If you're a new country, um, that's, of course, you have to transition because uh, you, you're on, in an unfamiliar territory. Uh, but even if you are, if you have been here for a long time, I, I think you need to reinvent yourself. Like today is not like, you know, grandparents time that you get a job and you are in that same job for, I mean, it still happens, but not, not as typical. And, and as we progress, like our children will have, you know, they will change career more times. That's, that's what I, that's what I hear. And I changed my career a few times as well. Like I'm, I'm always in IT, but uh, when I came here, I, you know, Hungary management consulting here, I started in testing for about seven years. Then I got into agile. Now I'm trying to get into blockchain. Um, you know, seven years from now, I might do want to do something else again. But right now, I'm, I'm, I'm in transitioning, just like you, Steve. <laughs> um, Steve is saying, decided to turn to a life of crime, and the only way that crime pays is then you're a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> and um, 
So guys, last question to the audience. Have you had to take a step back in your career? Uh, Gabor has shared his example before then he moved to Australia he had to take a step back. I actually never share my story. I've probably changed career the most from uh, all of you. My first job actually was a judo instructor. <laughs> That was what I was doing when I was 18. Um, and I work, um, I worked before in back in Russia, I actually worked in the fitness industry. I was working as a, like a sales manager in a fitness club. And then, uh, then I moved to Australia. I couldn't speak any English. <laughs> so I had to take a step back straight away. And I actually been fired from two jobs that I, <laughs> that I started here because I just simply couldn't understand the customers. So. <laughs> Um, I think my first job in Australia was a jewelry shop, actually. I was working in a jewelry shop. I was great at restocking, but uh, <laughs> but then the people actually was asking me about something. It was no idea. It was no idea. And then I worked at the reception in the fitness club, and uh, my English was improving, and I can actually, you know, talk with people a little bit. But then they called to book the class or something and would say their like name and the last name, forget about it. It just, <laughs> and then they would try to spell it, but they would spell it so quickly that like no way I could like even pick up the first letter. So that was completely failure. So <laughs> my, my shit get reduced, reduced and reduced and I lose that one too. So don't be discouraged guys, we all went. <laughs> <laughs> went through a bit of a bit of a journey so um, and uh, if you have any examples of you stepping back in your career please uh, share in like you know last two minutes of the live stream because it's time to wrap the things um for tonight and go have some dinner so um, Gabor what's uh, what's your last advice to everyone listening I, I really echo what you just said. Don't get discouraged. Like it, it can be a tough journey. It can be that you fail at first, but um, just use it as a lesson and, and, and you will be able to get up. You will be able to rebuild your career, build or rebuild your career um, as an immigrant or, or even as a, even if you're not an immigrant, but into a new, completely new area. Um, yeah, don't get discouraged. Just plan, replan, replan and, and act on it. And I think, you know, you can do it. You can, I can ah. do it. You can do it. We all can do it. Everyone can do it. It, it takes time. And I think um, where a lot of us get discouraged and they think that things need to uh, happen quickly and we put too much pressure on ourselves where they think like, oh, like in, um, I just moved to Australia and like in two months I will have a, I don't know, managing role. And that might be a great goal, but my, sometimes it might be just simply non-achievable and um, unachievable. So just maybe, yeah, sometimes you need to review and think like, yeah, maybe it will take me a year, not like two months to get this role. Um, and uh, yeah, again, like don't, don't get, get discouraged and set the, set the reasonable goals as long as you can see the long-term um, uh, long picture and have a vision for where you want to be. What to say that fail is only when you give up. <laughs> you're right. Yep. You're right, Steve. And uh, it can be failure that it's uh, you realize it's not for you. Like you start building a career, and you say, "Wait, wait a moment! I imagined it differently." But uh, but definitely give it a good go. Um, but yeah, I know we are at time, so yep. Thank you for the opportunity, Anna. Uh, oh, all is great to see you, Gabor, and uh, we have quite a few people joining us um, tonight as well. So, guys, um, please feel free. Gabor said that he's uh, always happy someone to hit him for coffee. <laughs> Not for free coffee. I'm happy to pay for my but I'm always <laughs> So um, if you um, want to have a chat with Gabor, maybe you're working in the IT industry, most likely, or like, you know, just um, to network and especially, you know, maybe now it's a good time to network online. Um, obviously connect with Gabor on LinkedIn. Um, Gabor, how do you spell your last name? <laughs> okay, it's, D, it's Gabor Deveni, D-E-V-E-N-Y-I. -E -E here you go, I'll put it, I'll put it here. Yeah. How about this, is it the right one? 
Yeah, yes. that's the right one. Here we go. I learned to spell, you know, it only took me 10 years. And it's funny, I always <laughs> pronounce it as Australians. So I, I don't pronounce my name anymore in Hungarian. That's that's just weird. It just I just do it the easiest. Order. <laughs> There you go. Thank you so much again, Gabor, and thank you so much, everyone, to joining us. So if you want to connect with Gabor, please uh, connect with him on LinkedIn. I'll see you in two weeks on Wednesday. Um, I, you know, haven't prepared topic uh, for for the, my next live stream because I've been stuck in Queensland. So I've been a bit of in a holiday mode, but I'm sure I'll get back to my work mode from Monday. And please um, stay in touch. The next show will be, so what's, what's today? Today is um, the second. So it will be 16th of June. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And I'll see you on the 16th of June. Thank you, Gabo. Thank you.